David Milzo. I'm a professional saxophonist and saxophone teacher from Hanover, Germany. Welcome to my second episode of my vintage tenor saxophone guide. Today I like to introduce you my Bischer 400 top hat and cane tenor saxophone. Uh, it is just from around about 1946-1947, got a 309,000 something serial number. As you just uh, heard in the beginning, this uh, instrument got a quite colorful, colorful, powerful uh, sound. Not too dark, more on the bright side of life. And uh, this is uh, quite remarkable for a vintage uh, saxophone, I guess. Another uh, special quality of the sound is that the sound uh, is always very round, big and thick textured and very constant uh, and this sound is very constant uh, on all registers uh, of the saxophone bottom of the horn, middle range and high range and the sound is also very constant in all dynamic levels from pia piano to forte. I'll give you an example for that. <coughs> Piano, mezzo forte, also in the middle and high reg uh, reg register. Another typical Bischer feature for me is the softer articulation. Soft means in comparison to other vintage saxophones like maybe uh, Con or King. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't matter how much you articulate, uh, the articulation, the strength of uh, the articulation. Uh, is much softer. Um, I will explain it like this. Um, the peak of the articulation is more linked or mixed with the release of the sound you hear or you play, um, which makes this another special feature in the uh, Bischer sound for me. I give you an example for that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
because of all these uh, special qualities, um, you maybe uh, would say, okay, this is this particular instrument, but I um, got uh, the exp I made the experience from playing a lot uh, of instruments of the Bücher uh, company that this is a general trademark for um, uh, the Bücher uh, saxophone. Um, here's my personal list uh, of all uh, instruments I played by Bischer. This, is, this includes uh, altos and tenors. Um, I've got the Bischer 400 from the 40s, 50s to uh, the end or mid 70s. I've played the Bischer Aristocrats from the 30s to uh, the 50s. I've played the Purmans. Uh, Bischer's the air cut made by Bischer also from the 30s to 50s and uh, all they uh, share the same special qualities. Uh, from there you maybe uh, can guess where this in which uh, music this instrument uh, um, is played. It's no wonder that it's a first choice, of course, of Sigurd Russia and his uh, commitments uh, back in the day until today. And in the jazz field, uh, we got uh, Johnny Hodges uh, on alto, on Bischer Aristocrat and Bischer 400. Um, from uh, swing tenor players, we got also his mate in the band, uh, Duke Elling band, El Sears, and m a little bit more prominent. Uh, I Quebec. We got um, a rock and roll and jump player like Lee Allen. These are all the names I know from that period. Uh, maybe a reason uh, that it's not so common uh, is uh, that the typical trademark for uh, swing saxophonists, uh, even uh, especially for the tenor players, is the subtone playing. And the subtone playing is a little bit more difficult to play here on the Bischer uh, saxophone. In my opinion, um, the tendency of um, uh, subtone playing is, because you got a very loose embrasure, uh, is that the subtone plays too deep in the intonation, which is for sure, uh, this is a kind of effect, but here it's a little bit too deep in comparison also f um, to a con or a king's uh, saxophone. Um, in this case, I retune it a little bit higher. I put the mouthpiece more uh, on the neck, but then you have to be careful that you are uh, that your pitch is not too high in the middle and higher register. So you have to keep very uh, uh, carefully your embouchure in the right position. For sure it is uh, possible to play septone. I give you an example for that. <laughs> Maybe uh, this is the reason why uh, the Bücher instrument came also prominent uh, through the use of Sang Rollins in his impulse period from the beginning 60s to the mid uh, 60s or in the uh, through the playing of Wayne Shorter with his Selma Bundy Poorman's Aristocrat Eckhart made by uh, Bücher saxophone. Um, here are uh, some examples, for example, uh, Yes or No by Wayne Shorter. <laughs> Thank you. 
Here you can use uh, the effect of the long notes, which are uh, very thick textured and uh, uh, you can uh, celebrate the, uh, the release of the sound. Sonny Rollins, on the other hand, explores more all um, um, aspects of articulation, especially in his very famous uh, tune, Alfie. <laughs> Could give you some insights about the Bischer 400 and uh, the Bischer saxophones in general. Uh, would be great uh, if you leave some positive feedback or subscribe my uh, YouTube channel or just uh, give a look to my homepage davidmilzo.com or davidmilzo.de. I hope to see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>